Where the Wild Things Are, Stories and Pictures by Maurice Sendak. The Night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind and another. His mother called him Wild Thing and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew and grew and grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max and he sailed off through night and day and in and out of weeks and almost over a year to where the wild things are. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. Till Max said, Be still. And tamed them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once and they were frightened and called him the most wild thing of all and made him king of all wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. Yahoo! Wee! Yahoo! Oh, 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 oh. Now stop! Max said and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then all around from far away across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, Oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. And Max said, no. The wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye and sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day and into the night of his very own room where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still hot. Okay. Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day by Judith Forst. I went to sleep with gum in my mouth. And now there's gum in my hair. And when I got out of bed this morning, I tripped on the skateboard. And by mistake, I dropped my sweater in the sink while the water was running. And I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At breakfast, Anthony found, yes, a Corvette Stingray car kit, in his breakfast cereal box. And Nick found, awesome, a junior undercover agent code ring in his breakfast cereal box. But in my breakfast cereal box, all I found was breakfast cereal. I think I'll move to Australia. In the carpool, Mrs. Gibson let Becky have a seat by the window. Audrey and Elliot got seats by the window too. Yes! I said, I was being scrunched. I said, I was being smushed. I said, if I don't get a seat by the window, I am going to be car sick. No one even answered. I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At school, Mrs. Dickens liked Paul's picture of the sailboat better than my picture of the invisible castle. Now, Alexander, what is that supposed to be? But there's a moat. At singing time, she said I sang too la la loud. At counting time, she said I left out 16. 
14, 15, 17. Who needs 16? I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I could tell because Paul said I wasn't his best friend anymore. He said, Philip Parker is my best friend. And I'm his next best friend. And that I was only his third best friend. I hope you sit on a tack, I said to Paul. I hope the next time you get a double-decker strawberry ice cream cone, the ice cream part falls off the cone part and lands in Australia. At lunch, there were, yes, two cupcakes. And Albert got, ooh, a Hershey bar with almonds. And Paul's mother gave him, oh, jelly roll with coconut sprinkles on top. Guess whose mother forgot to put in dessert? It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. That's what it was, because after school, my mom took us all to the dentist. And Dr. Fields found... Uh-oh, Alexander. You have a cavity. Just in me. Come back next week, and I'll fix it. Next week, I said, I'm going to Australia. On the way downstairs, the elevator door closed on my foot. And while we were waiting for my mom to go get the car, Anthony made me fall where it was muddy. And then when I started crying because of the mud, Nick said, You're such a crybaby, Alexander. While I was punching Nick for saying crybaby, Why'd you punch me? My mom came back with the car and scolded me for being muddy and fighting. Get in the car, now. I am having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I told everybody, no one even answered. So then we went to the shoe store to buy some sneakers. Anthony chose, all right, white ones with blue stripes. Nick chose, look what I got, red ones with white stripes. I chose blue ones with red stripes. But the shoe man said, we're all sold out. They made me buy plain old white ones, but they can't make me wear them. When we picked up my dad at his office, he said, Don't play with the copying machine. But I forgot. He also said, Watch out for the books on the desk. And I was careful, as I could be, except for my elbow. He also said, Don't fool around with the phone. But I think I called Australia. Please don't pick me up anymore. It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. There were lima beans for dinner, and I hate limas. There was kissing on TV, and I hate kissing. My bath was too hot, I got soap in my eyes, my marble went down the drain, and I had to wear my railroad train pajamas. I hate my railroad train pajamas. When I went to bed, Nick took back the pillow he said it could keep, and the Mickey Mouse nightlight burned out, and... I bit my tongue. The cat wants to sleep with Anthony, not with me. It has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. My mom says, some days are like that, even in Australia.